Tuesday, hot news. Everybody ready? I'm ready. I'm ready to be hot and spicy. I hope you guys are too. No jingle today. No jingle for the foreseeable future. My life is such a lie. <laughs> Time for the news. Let's go. So this is actually an update to a news story we reported on last week about an Apple, former Apple employee, stealing secrets about the company's car project that they were working on and that he was part of. Before he left, he downloaded a whole bunch of files and tried to escape the country, fleeing to China to work for a rival car manufacturer. He admitted to the FBI, apparently, that he did do the illegal downloading, but he pled not guilty in his plea hearing in San Jose, California. So we'll have to see where this goes. We'll keep you updated on all of that. But for right now, homie's saying he's pleading not guilty. Now it's time for some Apple news. It appears that Apple will be bringing a full-fledged version of Adobe Photoshop to iPads in the coming fall. Up until now, it's only been a cheap, crappy, minimized version of Photoshop, and now we'll have the real thing. And in case you thought Linus's iMac Pro struggles were the last of the company not being able to repair certain things, it turns out that the brand new 2018 MacBook Pros won't be able to have major services until September. Minor services aren't available right now, but they will be available later this month. But in according to a service document that 9to5Mac saw, they said that the major parts, that such as the PCB and everything that's soldered onto that, those won't able, be able to be replaced until September of this year, which kind of indicates that maybe, uh, you know, Apple didn't really have all of the things in line, which was the ba basic argument for what Linus had, was that if you're selling a pro model of something, something meant for professionals, you really should be launching with some sort of service plan once it comes out and not waiting till months down the line to make sure that everything is taken care of later. Because I mean, professionals break things all the time. And if they can't get a replacement because you aren't certifying your people or you don't have the parts available, it's kind of not an actual professional grade system that's happening there. Uh, just my thoughts. What do you guys think about Apple not having things ready for their iMac or their MacBook Pro on launch? Let's talk about that down in the comments. Now this next story is something that I didn't think was gonna happen anytime soon or was even possible and this is still a rumor so we can you know hold our breasts with it but it appears that some people may have gotten their hands on the upcoming Coffee Lake refresh that should be coming out shortly, and their indication is that it will be launching on August 1st. So this information is coming out of PC Builders Club where they're talking about a source who potentially has their hands on one of these chips. Now they're saying that with the CPU that they're putting it in the system and it's being recognized by CPU-Z as is 8086K. However, the interesting, the most important thing to note here is that they are saying that this is a soldered IHS as opposed to the thermal interface material approach that Intel has been taking, which is basically putting toothpaste on their CPUs. So the soldered approach is going to give us much better temperatures and potentially much better performance because the source is quoting that this 8086K is easily getting up to 5.5 gigahertz on multiple different samples across the board. So if this is the i7-9700K, the refresh, we're seeing that we could potentially have higher clock speeds not because the architecture has improved at all, but finally because Intel has decided that they're gonna stop putting toothpaste on their CPUs and we can actually have them soldered just like AMD is doing for Ryzen. They have no information on whether or not an eight core is available. They've only been texting the six core 12 thread overclockable version. So we'll have to keep our ears out for more information about that coming out soon. If this is a legitimate rumor, this is very exciting to hear that Intel is actually taking steps besides architectural changes. They're they're actually gonna bring us something useful as consumers, which means lower temperatures and hopefully better performance on the overclocking chips. And then in more interesting news that nobody really saw coming or even thinks is kind of plausible because they, I mean the mockery that AMD drivers were always unstable. It appears that QA consultants who are an independent provider of software quality assurance and testing services have released a report about AMD versus Nvidia graphics cards and the stability of the graphics cards during their testing. So they tested these GPUs under a 24-7 workload for 12 straight days and record the frequency of blue screens of death, crashes, and all of any other type of instability that may have happened during the testing. And we see the cards being tested were Quadros, as well as the 1080 Ti, 1060, 60, and a 1050. And then on the AMD side, there were the Radeon Pros, as well as a Vega 64, an RX 588 gig, and an RX 560. And they found the most interesting bit is that AMD 
is quite considerably a bit more stable than NVIDIA during all of this. So after 12 days, NVIDIA GPUs had passed 356 out of 436 tests without crashes or hangups or anything going wrong there. However, AMD had passed 60 more of those tests coming in at 416 out of 436 tests, which gives it a passing score of 95%. That's basically an A. NVIDIA would have gotten a B minus in this test if we're just looking at raw percentages here. However, the one thing to note about all of this is that while QA Consultants is an independent company who uh, shouldn't be influenced by in AMD or NVIDIA, AMD did commission the study. So they're the ones who were paying for it. They were the ones behind it. And so we could see this as potentially being a little bit skewed. They chose a driver that could give them better results and make sure that they were doing things. There's an entire 122 page technical document put out about the testing procedures and everything that they went through in with this testing. So you can check that out. We'll leave a link to that in the video description. It is hosted on AMD's website, fun fact. So of course, they're likely going to be publishing a report that shows that they are better than NVIDIA in this realm. But I wanna know what your personal experience is, regardless of what QA consultants is seeing. Is your system, if you have AMD or NVIDIA cards, have you found that AMD has been more reliable? Or have you found that NVIDIA has been more reliable? We're gonna leave a poll right up there, but also let me know down in the comments whether you found better a GPU performance and stability with uh, either Team Red or Team Green. Let's chat about it. It appears that Intel and Micron are splitting ways after they complete the second generation of 3D cross point technology, which if you haven't heard, has been used in Intel's Optane drives. It appears that they're gonna continue to develop 3D cross point independently of each other and separately. This means that we could potentially in the future be seeing Optane like performance in third party companies SSDs and that Intel won't just have a stranglehold on this. So that means that Optane could be coming to AMD systems, which would be fantastic. Obviously there is Stormy, which exists, but that's not gonna be the same as a hardware solution. Hopefully with this split, this means that more consumers can get their hands on the tremendously fast and awesome SSDs that Intel makes with the Optane drives. So the, this could be good for consumers and I'm excited to see where this potentially goes. We'll keep you updated on the story if this develops any further in the future. Samsung is announcing the world's first eight gigabit LPDDR5 mobile RAM technology on the 10 nanometer process. Woo, LPDDR5 offers a couple advantages over the current LPDDR4, including being 1.5 times as fast as well as offering a new deep sleep mode, which will cut the power usage to approximately half of what it normally is in the idle mode of LPDDR4 currently, which will hopefully allow it to have better power consumption, but then also it operates at a lower voltage, means meaning you're saving power there as well. And that could mean that we could have better battery life on a bunch of different systems in the mobile sector coming forward soon. And then in a completely different sense of what AI means, apparently the game, the terrible flop, Aliens Colonial Marines was marooned basically by a terrible programming bug that comes down to a single letter in an INI file. It appears that Gearbox Software outsourced a lot of the development of Aliens to a whole bunch of other different studios during this process and they didn't proofread, I guess, because a modder found that if you just change a single A, if you delete a single A in one of the INI files, it'll actually get the game to work properly because the AI in the game wasn't working well, which is also one of the reasons why it was a tremendous flop. So they misspelled tether, T-E-T-H-E-R, with T-E-A-T-H-E-R. So if you get rid of that A, maybe, maybe go back and uh, give Aliens Colonial Marine another try. Might be worth it. Apparently, Atari has completely faked all of the nonsense surrounding the VCS Indiegogo campaign that they were holding. So they were showing gameplay footage of a few different games, including Tempest 4000. It turns out that the creator of Tempest 4000, Llamasoft, had no idea that a port was made for this Atari VCS. Well, it turns out it hadn't, and Atari was basically just using a PC to show all of the gameplay footage for the VCS, and it appears that a Reddit investigation it basically shows that uh, Atari is kind of kind of faking all the things that got people excited for this retro box console. Now, it's not to say that this might not turn out to be a video game player that will actually work in what they're saying it will be, but it's just another one of those Kickstarter things. Even from a company that people can hold so near and dear, they fake things to hopefully get you to buy them sooner. It sucks. Speaking of pre-ordering things, it appears that those vague release dates that retailers sometimes put on their website, like coming fall 2019, are now banned in Germany completely. So this is coming. So this is coming out of Eurogamer, where they're talking about how this ruling came about after a consumer protection claim was made against 
the German retailer Meteor marked over the pre-order of the Samsung Galaxy S6 in August 2016. So the ruling applies to all products, including video games. So those Kingdom Hearts 3 coming sometime 2018, no longer a thing. Banned in Germany. Hopefully that law gets passed everywhere, unless you don't like the government getting involved in your business, in which case I hope it does it for you. If you weren't satisfied with how much RAM Chrome was eating already, the Spectre and Meltdown fixes that they're having to apply means that it's actually going to use more RAM. Yes, my friends, that 32 gigabytes that you installed to hopefully deal with all the thousands of tabs that you have to do research on hot news, I'm speaking personally here, well, you're gonna need a little bit more, but unfortunately they don't make dim sizes high enough that I could have more RAM in this laptop. So basically I'm stuck with where I'm at and I'm just gonna have to eat the higher cost. And this is why when people tell me that eight gigabytes of RAM is enough for a gaming PC, I say nay, if you use Chrome, you need at least 16, okay friends, because of things like this. It appears that it's going to use between 10 to 13% more be because of a feature called site isolation, which now is enabled by default on Mac, Linux, Windows, and Chrome OS. You can turn it off, but then you leave your PC vulnerable to these hacks that could potentially happen. So safety or your computer actually works, up to you. Or just use Firefox, that's also an alternative. And that's gonna wrap up everything I have for hot news today. What do you think of everything we discussed? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button while you're down there and to show support for our videos. And maybe get subscribed to stay up to date on everything that we release, tech related and otherwise. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Cheers.